and welcome back to a new episode with my friend Andrew Cassell from Valor Accounting Services. Andrew, how are you today? I'm very well. How are you doing, Leo? I'm very well, very well. How how is London? London's not bad. It's uh it's gloomy, but it's not raining, which is which is good. Nice. That's always always a positive. Always a positive. Fantastic. Well, thanks for uh, jumping on again uh, with us. And today we're going to be talking about hiring staff. Okay, so that's a sense. Well, that is probably one of my favorite topics and one that I get asked on a regular basis from from coaches who want to bring on staff um, to either grow and scale their business. So over to you, Andrew. Talk to us a little bit about what we're what we're going to discuss today. Yeah, brilliant. So essentially, we're going to be talking about just the basics of, you know, what does it mean to hire staff, when to hire, different scenarios uh, around that, and the different types of staff that you may hire in your sports coaching business. Then we're going to, going to look at the kind of more the accounting aspects, and then the financial aspects of uh, hiring staff. So Perfect. start off with just you know the when to hire you know so i guess there's going to be a number of different scenarios along the stage of business you're at now for most businesses they are going to probably experience hiring staff when they're off sick they're on holiday they need cover you know so that would be one of the uh the the occasions where where that would happen and it won't happen too often but it, it will happen now, uh, another one would be if you want to hire a certain uh, member of staff which has a specific skill set, which you don't have, that could offer a more of a more of a rounded service package. Could complement what your uh, what your sports coaching business does, um, and just to provide different level of service as well to, mm -hmm. to your clients. Another one would be expanding the business, you know, business growth. You want your you want your sports coaching business to get bigger. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it does mean you have to hire additional uh, staff to 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 for you to uh, achieve that goal. Another one would be off season. For example, if you want to prepare and you want to train staff for peak seasons for example when it's very very busy and you want to hire maybe an assistant coach mm -hmm. during those peak seasons you may want to hire them at the off season especially if they're just starting out so that gives you a bit of time to you know prepare them to train them up we'll obviously talk a bit more about that as well later on mm -hmm. and another one as well which uh, a lot of business owners do, especially starting out, struggle with is they just want to focus on other areas of the business. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there, there we go. Yeah, like that. Like that. So essentially, for those watching, when we're talking about hiring, okay, it's not just hiring an assistant coach, right? We're talking about you can hire maybe a receptionist, someone to do your admin, social media. Okay, so it's not just specifically when to hire an assistant coach am i right andrew that that you know what that's it because it's about you as a business owner when you've got your when you're just running it yourself you may want to hire and we're going to actually talking about it now but you may want to hire other members of staff to increase your capacity on the pitch yeah so going on to that is first of all we're going to look at different types of staff that you can hire on the pitch and the first one is maybe a replacement maybe you want to take a step back from the business and work on other areas mm -hmm. or maybe you want to complement your you know uh, level of service by hiring a for example if you're a football coach you may want to hire a a coach that specializes in goalkeeping potentially yeah. you know maybe you want to do a master class and maybe hire them on a one-off occasion, you know. Uh, and also, you may want to hire a an assistant coach, yeah, as well. And we can talk. Obviously, we'll talk a bit more about like hiring an apprentice mm -hmm. as well. 
that can be quite beneficial, especially when starting out. And then we talk about off the pitch. Now, as Leo said, you may want to, you're going to be doing a lot of things as as much as, you know, you may be passionate about uh, delivering this level of service to your to your clients on the pitch. There's going to be other things you're going to be doing. There's going to be the account side, the tax side. You may have to hire a bookkeeper, an accountant, subcontract them out. Um, admin. There might be a lot of admin that you might need to do. So you might need to hire a virtual admin or uh, an in-house admin. You may want to have a business coach, a mentoring coach, for example, to help you scale your business. You may want to hire a, someone to do your marketing because that as well can take a lot of time. Yeah. Or you might want to just hire someone to help recruit for players, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. That's so definitely, yeah. So there's definitely, you know, different different reasons to 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 hire different types of staff. Yeah, it's it's a good point you made, especially when you're talking about different areas of expertise. Because last week I had a conversation with a with a coach who's in 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 soccer as well, soccer football, uh, and currently what he's working, so he's running the business by himself. He's got 150 kids that he trains on a weekly basis, but he's doing it all by himself. So he's doing the admin, he's doing the coaching. And I said to him, you know, man, you're, you're doing really well, but it's going to get to a point where you're going to get burnt out because you're doing just too much. So hopefully I'm definitely going to send him this video uh, to watch. Uh, but that's something, you know, 150 players is great. It's a really good business, but it gets to a point where you're like, right, bring him, bring someone in to at least do the admin work, right? The reaching out to parents or the, the sending out emails or to do the social media content. Because uh, he was at a point where he was doing everything by himself. Yeah, yeah. And that's, it is so true because it really depends on, what the business owner wants to do it could be something that they're happy with the level of turnover they're getting their income but they just want to free up a bit more time and hiring uh someone off the pitch may help do that you know it's not all about expanding for growth it can just be you know having a bit more peace of mind within your business you know yeah. so uh so so yeah okay now we're going to be looking a little bit touching on the accounting aspects of hiring staff because especially when starting out as a sports coaching um you know as a sports coaching business you don't really are you going to hire a full-time employee <laughs> mm -hmm. you know that's why that can be quite overwhelming mm -hmm. you know and uh so what i would say for you know sports coaches that what to try out and this really does come into when you know you're off sick or you're on holiday you may just want to subcontract a uh, a coach that is maybe does has maybe has their own business maybe has a full-time job uh, or does has a part-time job and subcontract them out see how they're doing right because you don't have to be tied down to the, having to set up a payroll system because that's what essentially happens when you have a you know an employee whether it be an apprentice a full-time or a part-time employee you have to set them up on a paye system which is called pay as you earn system and it's it's the payroll system we have here in the uk mm -hmm. and uh, you have to have that set up if you want to have an employee working for you however mm -hmm. if you want to first like subcontract sports coaches you don't have to do that because essentially what would be the agreement would be they would maybe work one or two days during the week and see how it goes and what they would do they'll just invoice you for the amount of time that's worked mm -hmm. you know so that can be a good start to getting into starting to employ someone because that you may want to employ them full time you know it's a good trial period because when you another thing as well when you start getting into employing other people is you know, there's there's HR gets involved. You have to kind of, you have to, you know, create a, uh, a an employment contract. Yeah. You know, there's certain clauses in there. So 
subcontracting can be a good middle ground before getting to hiring an employee, you know, full time, for example. Nice. I like that. So going to, to your point on subcontracting, because this is a question I get asked a lot. So with subcontracting, uh, essentially the coach uh, invoices you or sends you the invoice, you pay them, and then they are um, in charge or it's their responsibility to then file their own taxes, right? Yeah, that's correct. So they're essentially, depending on their circumstance, as I said, if they are a business owner themselves um they may be they would send out invoices anyway to their clients okay and what they will be doing is just sending you an invoice same sort of thing if they're in, in full-time employment in another you know company or another business they'll do the same thing but as you said they will be filing their own taxes okay. uh separately yeah okay good brilliant okay now we get to the last bit which is more of the financial aspects of hiring staff and the reasons around that so you may want to hire staff to grow your business now this is this is a this is an interesting one because it is very much case by case basis in mm -hmm. terms of the business even if you're a sports coach every business is different because you're going to have different sources of income you're going to have different income you know models in terms of you're going to be charging a monthly membership are you going to be charging one off are you going to be block block booking you know one to ones are you doing online there's a number of things however just to generalize a little bit it is about identifying okay you want to how does hiring someone contribute to your increased revenue and with that, it, that's why it's very, very important when you want to grow is it can be it. There is going to be an element of risk in anything, whether you're, you know, doing a, a marketing campaign and you're investing money in that you want to see a return on your investment. Mm. Now, a good way of doing that is obviously monitoring that and doing as much research as possible. Whereas when you're hiring staff, there's going to be a number of different factors here. The other factor as well is time management. You know, you've got to see if you're going to be hiring a sports coach to take over what you're doing, what does that mean to you as a business owner? That means you can maybe spend more time on other areas of the business. And mm -hmm. that's probably your goal. Or maybe you want to spend time doing more income generating activities. For example, maybe online coaching, merchandising as well. Yeah. And this is where it's very important to sit down with, you know, a a, a business coach in that field to discuss these things. Mm -hmm. And also another one is scalability, because if you're taking on more, uh, more staff, that means that you can increase your capacity, which means yeah. you can take on additional clients. That may take time. So you've got to understand that there's going to be a time or where you may not generate as many clients first because you've just started out and that might tie in with the marketing side as well. So a good strategy allows you to minimize that risk of hiring that, that uh, extra staff member and making sure you get, you know, maximum return on investment. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I like it. Um, and also going, going back to what you were talking about, maybe focusing on other areas it could be a case where you want to spend more time with your family as well. So you bring someone in to kind of run it for you uh, because that's also another thing that's really, that some coaches really struggle with. They're running so many sessions and then they don't end up having any time for themselves or for their family or doing things away from work, right? They're so in, in the business that it gets to a point that you can essentially long-term burn out. Um, and, you know, I've seen it, I've seen it with coaches. They, they end up hating what they're doing because there's no ex escape from it. They become kind of trapped. So, so yeah, it's building systems where you can bring in coaches to do some of your sessions or do the admin work, like, like you said. Yeah, exactly. I think, and, and that's such an important point, you know, 
it is about it is really starting with the goals of the business owner what do they mm -hmm. want to achieve because from that you can start doing things like as you said you can take a step back from the business spend more time with family or if you want to grow the business spend you know more time on other areas you may want to focus on, focus on business development and that can take time yeah. and may you want maybe you want to another thing as well is it, it's all interlinked yeah. you may want to have a sports coach a mentor to help you with that mm -hmm. but you need that time to do it in the first place <laughs> correct yeah yeah it's completely agree fantastic andrew well anything else before we wrap up that that is it that is it in a nutshell <laughs> nice that's brilliant uh, thanks again andrew for coming on here and you know sharing your expertise with our audience uh, if you need to contact either andrew or myself we're going to put all the links at the bottom so you can do that uh, but thanks again andrew and i look forward to our next chat pleasure thank you